Hey, Chan Physics, uh, just a quick video. I, hopefully this one won't be really um, too long. Um, and the question on the screen right there is what is power? And for the longest time um, when people um, refer to the electric company, the, the, the company that brought the electricity to the house, they called it the power company. And so hopefully by the end of this real short video, you'll understand why they call it that, the power company. Um, so we have a new equation. Um, and that equation is right here. So power is the amount of energy or work done each second by a circuit. And we've got this new equation, of course, whenever we have equations, we'll always put them up on the board or put them on the test. Uh, power is equal to current times the voltage. And you can see right there that power has a unit of watts. Um, something you might feel similar to you guys because we talked about it earlier um, and also um, whenever you look at a light bulb, there's either a 60 watt bulb or a 100 watt bulb or something like that. So it, it is always sold, bulbs are always sold and how many watts that they can put out or how much power. And so you can see that um, in the in the left hand corner there, 100 watts um, is just 100 joules each second. Remember, joules was the unit for work. So it's work divided by time is power. Um, and we learned that in a couple of units before. But right now, the equation that you need to know for electricity is power equals current times voltage. All right. And um, they want to know uh, a couple of questions about this circuit. So here we have a circuit here, a 12 volt battery with three amps of, um, of current, and they want to know the power. And so let me just go back here real quick um, and flip over it's a paper here so um, what I want um, all of us to know and so my classes do this all the time but um, we, we should know that um, always 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 we can always rely on the four column method to um, basically do almost any type of physics equation when we're at a loss and so if we like well I don't know how to do that or I have no idea um, you can see this at the beginning of the, what, what they're, all they're doing is listing everything that's in the current in, in the current problem. So we have a, a current of three, I is equal to three, voltage 12, and they want to know the power. And so we always do this in my class, I equals three, V equals 12, and power equals question mark. That's our first column. Second column, we always write down the equation. So power equals I times V. And then the third column, we substitute and solve. So power is not what we don't have. Current is three, voltage is 12. And so the fourth column then becomes power is equal to 36 watts, okay? And that's a pretty simple um, uh, application of power. And so you can imagine that that can easily be on a test because we like simplicity, especially in the situation that we're in right now. So. All right, so 36 watts. All right, how much current flows through a 70 watt guitar amp that runs on a voltage of 12 volts? So here, let me see if we can still get this. All right, so here we have that same problem here up on the on the thing right here. We've got a list. So all we did was we went through the words and basically listed everything. So we got power equals 70. 20 and current equals the question mark. We write down the equation P equals I times V and then either we either solve for the one that's missing or in my class all we do is we just say okay well the power is 70, the current is unknown, and the voltage is 12, 120, 120. Okay and so now all we have to do is divide by 120 on both sides to get the, the uh, current. And the current is 70 divided by 120 or 0.58. Okay, so simple applications of the four column method is really all we're gonna be asking for you guys to do in the, this, um, this problem set. So here we have determined the use by a hairdryer that draws a current of eight amps and runs on 120 volts. So you might be asking yourself, why are they always using the same, um, for some reason, that. There we go, that's much better. Um, 120 volts, because the 120 volts is what comes out of our sockets. And so if a problem, and you'll see that I think in the, the worksheet, doesn't say 
oh, what the voltage is. You should always assume that um, the, the voltage is 120 because that's what the U.S. electric um, voltage is. All right, so if we just use the four column method, determine the power used by a hairdryer that draws current of eight amps and runs 120 volts, um, you got I is equal to eight, V is equal to 120, and power is equal to question mark. We write down the equation, P is equal to I times V, or P is equal to 8 times 120, All right? And quick math tells me that's 960 watts. All right, so we just boom, 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 always, 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 we can rely on that. And um, always, whenever you're in a, a situation that you can't uh, figure out how to start a problem, this is how we started for call method. All right, determine the current used by an iPod, iPod that runs on 3.7 volt battery and has a power of two watts. All right, so if we just write down what they've got, they gave us a power of two watts, they gave us a voltage of 3.7, and they want to know the current. All right, so P, V, and I. We just write down the equation, P equals I times V, and so power two is equal to I times 3.7, all right? And we'll just divide by 3.7 on both sides. And we'll get I is equal to 2 divided by 3.7. So a little bit more than a half. 0.54. So I is equal to 0.54 amps. All right. Now there's um, a couple of questions in this PowerPoint that maybe you guys covered, maybe you didn't cover. But I'm just going to go over it really quickly with you guys. There's a, these ideas called conversions, and they're certainly going to need, we're going to need to be able to do conversions for chemistry, and really, I, like I tell my class, for life, right? we got to be able to do these things. And so this is asking us to, to convert 200 centivolts to kilovolts. Well, uh, we didn't spend a lot of time on it this year. Uh, we used to spend a ton of time on it in physics. But whenever we do a conversion, it's quite simple. Whatever we want to convert from, we write down first. And then we give our uh, we want we want to get to this um, unit at the end. So I'm just going to write down 200 centivolts. All right. When I convert, what I always do is I write down the number and then I build what's called a conversion factor. And as soon as I write down 200 centivolts, I know that centivolts have to be in the bottom because I want those two to cancel out. All right. And um, I'm going to go from centivolts. To volts so this is volts right here and I know that centi means a hundred so for every one volt there's a hundred centivolts okay maybe you don't know that um, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna put this down like I said we're gonna just do one conversion for this test at the most it's gonna be from watts to kilowatt kilowatts but anyway so here we go so these centivolts cross out and now Whatever number I've got here is in volts, but they want it in kilovolts. So I'm just going to build myself a second conversion factor. I know that volts is up here, so I'm going to have to put volts down here. So I'll put volts down there. And they want it in kilovolts, so kilovolts. And I know that for every one kilovolt, there are a thousand. Kilo means three. Uh, three zeros are a thousand. And so right now we see the voltage goes away, and we're in the unit that we want. So it's 200 divided by 100, which is 2 divided by 1,000. We can just put this in our calculator real quick. It's just 200 divided by 100 divided by 1,000. Okay, and we get 0 0.002. So 0 0.002 kilovolts. All right. All right, so then the next one, um, I'll just show it to you guys but I don't know if we need to, to know how to do it. But these are inches per minute to miles per hour. The truth is, it's not going to be on the test. I'm not going to waste your time on it. Um, it's a really confusing uh, thing that we really spent a lot of time. I really wish we had time to teach you guys conversions because they are so important. But we didn't, and so let's not waste our time on that one. Okay. All right, so now the next thing that's in your PowerPoint is this the idea of what's what, what do we recognize as power in the home? And power in the home is really just these numbers that we see a lot of times on the yellow sticker, so when you buy an appliance. But what they talk about is um, 
when we get power of the home, we talk about how many kilowatts we get times the hours that we use them. And this is a convenient way of using power because if we just use per seconds, um, we can't not really um, uh, get our, our, our accounting set up and everything. How do we pay for something that we just use for a second? So instead, they talk about electric meters, which are the things that we see outside our houses. They're going to measure how many kilowatt hours we use. Well, what's a kilowatt hour? Well, it's a, an appliance that uses power of kilowatts for one hour. And so it's just a matter of taking the, um, the power of our appliance and multiplying it by how long we're using it, how many hours we're using it. And so we can see energy is just power times time. All right. So here's some some um, ideas of like what you're using. And, and really just this is just should be interesting to you guys. A stove, of course, is just going to draw a bunch of electric power. Sometimes when we turn on our stoves, we see the lights kind of dim a little bit because it's pulling a, a whole bunch of power. Whereas if we look at some of these other things that we've used, like a hair dryer, well, that's going to use a, it's still a decent amount. So sometimes we see the, the lights kind of dim a little bit for a second. But then these other things that we've got here really don't use a ton of power. All right. These are in watts, okay, not kilowatts. All right. So what we're going to do for this class, though, what you need to do is you need to be able to do some simple calculations. So it says an electric stove uses 3,000 watts of power. It is used to bake for 30 minutes. And so they say you've got 3,000 watts. You want to know how many kilowatts that is. All right. So if I have 3,000 watts, this is the one conversion that you need to be able to do. 3,000 watts. Right. We're going to put watts down here and we're going to put kilowatts here. So kilo means 1,000. So for every kilowatt, there is 1,000 watts. Right. And if you look at this setup right here, the watts go away and we get 3000 divided by 1000 or three kilowatts. And I'm going to pause this real quick. We're almost done. Just give me a second. OK, hopefully you guys didn't hear those students that were just playing in the hall here. It's uh, Tuesday while you guys were out. I'm trying to do this video. So anyway, um, we found out that 3000 watts is three kilowatts. So it says how many kilowatt hours does it use for baking? Well, if we have three, the power is three kilowatts and they want to know the energy, right? And they give us the hours is equal to, or the time is equal to five, 30, 30 minutes, right? A half an hour, right? So we, we had this equation power is equal to, I mean, sorry, energy is equal to power times time. And so energy is equal to three kilowatts times 0.5 hours, because 30 minutes is a half an hour. And so we get 1.5 kilowatt hours. Okay, so one and a half kilowatt hours. And so this is how the energy company um, or the power company charges us. And so if they ask us, uh, you got 1.5 kilowatt hours and it costs 15 cents per kilowatt hour, how do you, um, how do you uh, know how much you paid for it? Well, you just simply write down 1.5 kilowatt hours. We're going to build a conversion factor, right? It is 15 cents per kilowatt hour for every one kilowatt hour. And so you can see how the kilowatt hours grow, go away. We're left in dollars. Whatever 1.5 times 1.15 is, so 1.5 times 0.15 is 0.22225, okay, dollars, or 22.5 cents is the total. All right, real quick. Okay, I'm going to be real fast here because I only got 15 seconds left, or 35, 45 seconds. So this is a 1,000-watt light bulb is left on for 5.5 hours. First question, how many kilowatts is that? 100 watts, watts to kilowatts is just like this. And so we get 0.1 kilowatts, All right? How many kilowatt hours does it use? Well, if we have 0.1 kilowatts and we're going to use it for 5.5 hours, we're going to get 0.1 times 5.1 times 5.5, and we get 0.55 kilowatt hours. And last thing, we just take that 0.55 kilowatt hours 
and multiply it by 0.5.